again, everybody. Welcome back again to the Celtic Forever podcast. We've got John here to go over everything that's happened over the weekend. And it's not all bad news. Let's put it that way. It's not all bad news. Let's bring in John. How are you, John? Uh, happy Sunday, Xander. Happy sun- Sunday, all the listeners. Yeah, happy Sunday to everybody. Um, we're going to go through the post-match reaction to Celtic 2, Aberdeen 2. But obviously, there was football played today as well. Than just playing Kamarnock at Rugby Park. So we'll have a wee discussion on that as well. Obviously, Rangers losing that one, one nothing. So, as I said at the start there, John, it wasn't it all bad news on Saturday, was it? Not at all, no. And the way the game went, I was, uh, I, could, I could say, but I felt kind of relieved to get a draw, but angry at the same time that uh, Celtic took their foot off the gas in the second half and, uh, you know, it could have been a whole lot worse, Sander. Yeah, it could have been. They actually went ahead, Aberdeen. It was disallowed because of the handball. But obviously, Celtic were denied the penalty at the very end as well. And they were not given the chance to throw in a corner as well. The referee blew the whistle before they had the chance to take the corner. So there's all that to go through. Um, but let's get some housekeeping out of the road first, folks. Just a wee minute on this. Um, nobody won the prize. Nobody guessed the two-each draw. So... That prize will roll over to next week, next week's game, next uh, Sunday, I think it is. We play John it Sunday, we're away to Motherwell. So the prize will roll over to that the correct score for the Motherwell games. Um, but we'll, we'll touch on that maybe in midweek. Um, hit the like button, hit the share button, hit the subscribe button, and hit your notification bell as well. And thanks to everybody that's already already done that. That's appreciated. Right, John, let's get into this post match then. Um, so yeah, on on the on the the preview, John. I said that a draw, um, it wouldn't be the end of the world with a draw. And, uh, and going by the day's result, John, that, that's definitely the case. And we actually move further ahead of Rangers in the league. Six points clear of Rangers. Obviously, Aberdeen are still on their tails. Both Celtic and Aberdeen sitting joint top in the league. But yeah, a draw, wasn't it, it wasn't the end of the world yesterday, was it? No, it was far from it. Uh, I thought a draw was, to be honest with you, I thought it was probably the fair the fair result. But uh, Celtic obviously realising they were looking looking at a draw, started to uh, put their foot on the gas again and dominated the last fifteen minutes, pushed Aberdeen back, pinned them into their eighteen yard box. Uh, but like you says, at the end of the day happens, and you look back at yesterday and say, you know what, it was a good day's work. Yeah, it was a good day's work, John. Uh, I think, you know, we sort of threw it away with that two-goal lead, didn't we? Because with 2 nothing at Celtic Park, you're, you're thinking to yourself, that's it. It's the, the points are in the bag. And maybe the players thought the same thing, John. I don't know. Um, but they certainly weren't the same team in the second half, were they? Um, so let's run through some of the bullet points in the first half, John. Um, right away, tackle on Alex Valley in a second minute, John. Play on. Graham Shinney gets away with a nasty one. Early on in the game, um, so no, 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 uh, talking to for Graham Shinney, but it was a nasty one on Valley John, um, and it was a case of play on 12 minutes gone. There was a shot from Engels, uh, it was a mistake from a goalkeeper. Went to Engels, runs in, um, he's, he's obviously very wide out in the touchline, and that's his shot. And he's unlucky, Engels, with this one off the crossbar. Aye, uh, a shot come cross sort of thing. Um, don't know if that was an attempt on goal or a cross or whatever, but I very unlucky. It hits the top of the crossbar. Goalkeeper gets injured, wraps his cell around the post, trying to scramble it. Uh, but he was getting nowhere near it anyway, the keeper. No, 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 nowhere near it, John. It was, a, it was a nice bit of vision from Engels, if I'm going to be honest with you. I thought he had a good first half, and like the rest of the team fell away in the second half. But uh, he was decent, very decent in the first half, because he has another shot in the 14th minute, just wide, about 17 yards out. Maybe should have done slightly better, but it's another decent effort, John. So two efforts in two minutes from Arnie Engels early on in this one. Aye, aye, a couple of really decent efforts, but... Uh... And just test the Aberdeen goalkeeper it a few times. It never really created much in the first half at all, to be honest with you, Celtic. Yeah, very, mm. yeah, just huffing and puffing, really. Yeah, I, th- I thought the first half, well, apart from the first, you know, five, five, eight minutes, I thought we were quite dominant, actually, because we get our goal, 23rd minute, and it's a lovely uh, through ball from Engels through to Kyogo, who doesn't 
doesn't give this one up, John, does he? He runs and runs and runs and he beats the Aberdeen defence to the ball, puts his foot in the ball, spots Hatati inside the box and it's a delightful finish from Hatati, John, to put his one nothing up in the 23rd minute. Ah, it's a nice finish. It's all about Kyogo's run right enough. He did the right thing, takes it to the touchline, cuts it back. Uh, aye. aye, nice finish for Hatati. Need to see more of that Hatati getting more goals, Xander, because we've, we've lost uh, Matt O'Reilly. And there's not really anybody chipping in the goals like he did from the midfield. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's good to see Rio getting on the score sheet, actually, John. And I think that's, that's his third or fourth of the season. So, yeah, he could be doing a wee bit more as regards to putting the ball in the net. But that was a lovely finish to put his one nothing up. Uh, 26 minute, another pretty bad tackle on um, Valley. Went to this time from Nesbitt. Um, 26 minute, no. You got a talking to, but no yellow card either for this one, John. I know every foul can be a yellow card, but th- these are heavy, heavy tackles, John. You know, down the Achilles, down the uh, the ankle. You know, these are late, very late tackles, and um, could cause injuries to players. So, uh, no yellow for this bit on the twenty-six minute either, John. So, the referee I thought was very lenient towards Aberdeen yesterday. Very lenient, aye. Uh, the strong arm tactics were out yesterday in force, went to Aberdeen, kicking Celtic players up in there. Any chance they got. And uh, it took a while for the referee to start getting into his pocket and uh, producing yellow cards, which uh, they really should have been produced a lot, lot earlier in that game than, than what they were. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, uh, it's annoying to see it, isn't it, especially when you see Celtic players crumpled in a heap lying on the grass, John, and, uh, and nothing's getting done about it. So we go 2 nothing up in the 27th minute. Kyogo into it's a Hitati shot. It's blocked. Falls to Kyogo inside the box. Smashes it home. Be about, I don't know, seven yards out possibly. It wasn't very far out anyway, but he buries it anyway. Um, yeah, it's a nice wee finish from Kyogo. So he's got an assist and he's got a goal here, John. Um, it's good to see the wee man back in form in the first half yesterday. Aye, it was. Aye. Uh, he also got to... Uh, he didn't only smash the ball into the net, he gets smashed in the face with uh, Nielsen's elbow, which also mm. wasn't penalised. Yeah, Nielsen got away with absolute murder on Saturday, John, to be perfectly honest with you. The amount of times he, he was dragging Celtic players to the floor when the when Celtic are, you know, attacking. You know, three or four times I counted. And uh, I think he did eventually get a yellow card, didn't he, eventually? But uh, by that point, it's too late. Um so the first yellow does go to Aberdeen, John. Two minutes after the goal, it's McKenzie. Yellow card, tackle from the back. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, so 29 minutes before he, uh, he eventually brings out the first yellow card. Um, 35th minute, John, there's a nice clearance from Valley, wasn't there? Aberdeen showing a bit of intent. 35th minute, a clearance off the line. I don't know if this was a shot, John. I think this was a pass to the Aberdeen player that was standing in his cell, no near him. And Valley just uh, got to it first and cleared it behind for a corner. John, I thought that was a brilliant defensive clearance from Valley. I got a pat in the back off of Casper Schmeichel for that one. I really nice clearance. I thought he he got kicked off the park yesterday, Alex Valley. He was he was certainly he, tested. Let's put it that way. Yeah, he's not going to face a stronger test in Scotland this season than that because that boy was getting kicked off the park. And he uh, was, John. And I thought he'd done well. I think he handled it well, John. I, I he seemed to handle it pretty well. Um, but Aberdeen, I know that to make up the numbers, you've got to remember they're, they're there with a plan. And their plan was to put guys like Alex Valley under pressure. And they did that they, they did that well. If, if you're looking at it from an Aberdeen point of view, they did their job well. Yeah, it's funny to mention. I had an Aberdeen fan on the comments. Um, just, uh, he was actually okay. Just said, um, lucky to get a draw. And I just replied saying, yeah, Aberdeen, we're lucky to get the draw. So, um, <laughs> so he was fine. Uh, yeah, John, you've got to be fair, though, if you're going to be, be going on um, phys- physically, you've got to be fair because there was another tackle on Valley. And this one was in um, studs, John, down the front of the ankle. St- a stud marks on his ankle, John. This was another bad one. This, this, this time it was Clarkson. So that's three players had a go at Alex Valley, John. This, I mean, the boy just gets up and gets on with it, so fair play to Alex Valley. Um, but Clarkson, at least, he gets a yellow for this one. That's how bad it was, John. 
Uh, yeah, I thought he was a, maybe a bit of a target, Alex Farley, on Saturday. He definitely was a target. There's no doubt about that. Anybody watching that game would see that, that this boy's constantly getting filled. Uh, so that's obviously Aberdeen's plan. They tried to hit down the, that side of the park where Alex Valley plays. They obviously seen him as a bit of a weak link, same as they do with Greg Taylor. Um, but I think the boy can. He handled it okay. He wasn't brown in the game, by the way, but he handled with the abuse that he was getting. If you want to call it abuse, the hard tackles and all that. Uh, I think he handled that side of the game pretty well. And he defended okay as well, I suppose, but without having a a blender again. Yeah, I thought he had a good game actually, John. Um clearance off the line. He's running him, he's running him down the line as well. He's passing. He actually it was uh he assisted the assist for one of the goals as well, John. So yeah, I thought he played well. Um but the second half, John, it was a different story, wasn't it? because uh, Aberdeen come out 46 minute, one minute after the restart, John, and this is where you need to take over because I missed Aberdeen's first goal. If you want, want to uh, explain that to us. I can't remember it now. I know Liam Scales was outpaced. It was like, it was like a... It was either a, a through ball or a, a chip over the top. I think it was a through ball. Uh, and it puts uh, Sockler one-on-one with Cashmere Smeichel, basically. But Liam Scales, badly exposed for pace there, Xander. And that's uh, Sockler's one-on-one with Schmeichel. So he had a, quite a distance to run. Sockler as well, had to run about 50 yards. He's outpaced Liam Scales. Uh, and then he's one on one with Casper Smeichel and nice finish. Yeah, John, that's it. It's, if it's one on one, then there's a chance he's going to score. So, yeah, I've still to see it, mind you, I've not seen it. So that puts Aberdeen back in the game at 2 1. You know, this is when, it, when I. When I, when I came into the room and saw it for the first time, I saw two one on the on the screen. Couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. Two one. So right away you're thinking they're back in it. So and and that's exactly the way it turned out. Into uh, Nielsen eventually joined. He, did, he does get his booking after about five drag backs with Celtic players, heavy tackles. He eventually gets his booking for a foul on Callum McGregor in the fifty fifth minute. So Nielsen finally gets booked. He is a quite a physical boy, Nielsen, isn't he, John? He is. I've been watching Aberdeen all season. I say that uh, the other day on the podcast that he's a player that we need to watch. Big physical player. Uh, him and Shinny, both very physical pl- physical players in the centre of the park. So uh, I can uh, pencil them two in another podcast that they were the ones uh, to keep an eye on because they kind of control the midfield for Aberdeen. And fair play to them. I think they did a good job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I would have played well, to be honest with you, especially the second half. Uh, scales, John, 58th minute, a goal-scoring block. Another one from Big Scales. Uh, the guy's just a, a brilliant defender. Um, that, that would have given them the equaliser um, before they actually did equalise, if you know what I mean. Uh, but Scales is back there, John. Uh, another one and one with the goalkeeper, but Scales is back there to, to make the tackle and uh, knock the ball out for a corner. So, uh, another good block for big scales, John, but you know that trusty scales partnership isn't quite working just now, is it? I know, no, it's definitely not working. Um like I said, I like Trusty as a defender. It seemed to be slipping a lot yesterday. He was slipping all over the place. Um but no it's, I think uh, him playing on the right side of defence, central defence when he's a, a left footer. I've said it for weeks, he's making me feel really uncomfortable. And I couldn't believe it when I seen Carter Vickers wasn't starting yesterday. I was thinking, I didn't have that in mind. This could be a whole different game. Aye, he's, uh, I think he's resting him for Atalanta, to be honest with you. You know, I could be totally wrong, but, you know, to hear that he was he was training and he was ready for Aberdeen and then to hear that he wasn't starting, he wasn't even on the bench, was he? So, um, yeah. I, I don't know, John. It's just the trusty, the trusty thing, and the uh, the scales thing isn't quite clicking just now. Anyway, and there is time, plenty of time to go. Obviously, um, then Aberdeen get their equaliser, sixtieth minute deflected goal. Graham Shinney, you know, you know, tries a pot shot at goal, deflects off trusty into the net. Boom, two each. Unbelievable. We're we'll through away a two goal lead here, John. 
Aye, I've seen it coming, Xander. I've seen it coming. When it went to 2 1, I'm thinking, I've got a feeling Aberdeen's going to get another one here quick. I just had that feeling it was got, that was going to happen. I caught another quick goal, uh, and it did happen. Um, aye, Shinny's obviously he's had a, like you say, he's a pot shot deflection and in. Um, call it lucky if you want, but no much luckier than uh, Celtic's second goal. <laughs> it really is it. Uh, the ball was passed straight to uh, the Celtic player to have a shot. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, sometimes you need a bit of luck, don't you, John? Um, but that's it. 2 each Hattati comes off. Um, Maeda comes off as well. Forrest comes on. Um, Bernardo comes on. Uh, so a couple of subs to try and get us back in front. But it's Aberdeen. This score again, John, but this one's uh, chucked off for a handball off Duke. So, you know, as soon as this free kick came into the box, I knew they were going to score, John. I just right away I said to myself, they're going to score here. And sure enough, they scored. But luckily for us, it was chopped off through VAR for a handball. Aye, aye, correct decision. Uh, and they've, they've all ran air and celebrated with their fans, haven't they? As if they'd won the World Cup. Um, yeah. I love seeing that when they do that. And then it's chopped off. Um, instant karma, they call that. Yeah, that's it, John. It was good to see, actually, because it gave us a chance. It gave us, because from that point on, John, we just pounded Aberdeen, to be perfectly honest with you. That goal was chopped off. Um, we pounded their goal, trying to get the, the winner, uh, which didn't which didn't come, obviously. Um, McGregor's booked two minutes later, John, for a late foul. Um, nothing, no malice in it, just a late tackle. Yellow card for McGregor, fair enough. Uh, we move on. Big Ida with a downward header just over the bar, John, since the sixth minute. Big man was unlucky there. Um, he just sort of headers it down into the ground and just over the bar. Aye. A couple of inches lower, it's in the net. I think he did the right thing there, headering it down, because that, that that did confuse the keeper. He wasn't getting to that. Um, I think he's unlucky. That's all we can say. Unlucky, big man. Yeah, unlucky. And then we've got a forest shot, John. It's right at the goalkeeper, but he should have buried it. Uh, he's on the half turn, seven yards out, half turn, right at the keeper, though, isn't it? Either side of him, uh, it's a goal, but Forrest, uh, he gets his shot saved there. Um, which, we're pounding a goal, John, but it doesn't look as though this goal's coming, does it? No. Uh, I think when they brought Forrest on, they should have played him on the right and put Nicholas Kuhn out on the left. James Forrest. Very effective on the right hand side. Um but Nicholas Kuhn did nothing all day. So why not just stick him at the left? He's doing nothing anyway. Yeah, we're going to get to these player scorings, John, which is going to be interesting because and again, good first half, poor second half. We need, we need to cut that out, don't we? Uh trusty, last minute of the game, 90th minute. This is before the injury time, obviously. We have uh trusty with a header, free header, it's a miss, three yards out. That's over the bar. I thought Trusty should have done better there. Aye. Uh, the Celtics are no good at corner kicks and all that stuff and heather, heathering the ball into the net. We've got a guy that can take corners now and uh, Arnie Engels, he can take a good corner. But there's nothing on the end of it. Nobody's getting on the end of these nice corners. Uh, that's, that's been a feeling of Celtic for a long time, that. Yeah. It has, yeah. You know, Engels goes off, you know, for McCowan, didn't he? So there's nobody there to take a corner. So, um, all right, we'll move on. 92nd minute. That's James Forrest, as you say, John. He's on this left hand side. And it's another shot, and it's it's quite wasteful. It's wide again, John. Um, you can hear the frustration in the crowd. Um, yeah, it's just another shot wide into it. You know, I think by this point, 92 minutes, 10 minutes of injury time. I think we're getting a wee bit desperate at this point. Aberdeen were getting more desperate by that point, weren't they? Wasting time, yeah. kidding on, they've got cramp. I think all that, I think most of their players went down with cramp. <laughs> the old play acting, the time wasting, uh, they wasted uh, the 10 minutes injury time uh, by lying down with cramp. Yeah, I thought the, wait, the time wasting was quite poor, actually. Um, I thought this was a new invigorated Aberdeen, John. No, this was an Aberdeen that was wasting time. Um, all the old tricks of the book were pulled here, weren't they? The lying down, the cramp, the taking forever with goal kicks. 
It was all there, John. So nothing's really changed as far as I'm concerned. Although, you know, they seem a lot more physical, Aberdeen. That's that's the difference that I noticed. Um, all right, John. Then, then we get this um, goal again. Into it. Goal. It's a sort of blocked cross into the box. Falls down on top of the keeper. And sure enough, the referee's got to chop this one off. The ball falls into the net. But because the goalkeeper's slightly impeded, he disallows the goal. But I think that's the right decision there, John. Aye. Aye, you, you can't do that with a keeper. You can't just back yourself into the keeper like that. It's a automatic free kick. Um, I don't know why that's the case. I think that, I don't know if that rule should change or no, because goalkeepers are all at six feet five, big physical guys. Alistair Johnson backs into him, five feet ten or whatever, there's a wee guy. Um, keeper play acting, you know, he's diving down like he's uh, been shoved or something like that. But, uh, by the, the, the laws of the game, Xander, it's uh, rightly chopped half. I think Alistair makes it easy for the referees, John, there, to be honest with you. I think if, if Alistair was just a steady's ground, stood where he was standing and steady backing in a bit, that goal might have stood. You don't know. You just don't know. Anyway, this is the bit that everybody is talking about, John. The, the last minute of the game, the 98, 99th minute of the game, last minute of injury time, Two brilliant shots blocked off the line, John. How this ball stayed out the net, I do not know. Celtic supporters are saying it's a penalty. I've no saw the rerun yet, John, of this or the replay or any freeze or anything like that. And there's, there's loud screams for a handball. There really is off Duke again. You know, both sides of the ground, it's handball. His goal's disallowed. And then the other side, we don't get the penalty, do we? Um, and then we don't get the chance to take the, the corner, as I said at the very start. We don't get the chance to float this ball into the box to try and get the winner. The referee blows for full time, finishes 2-2, John. But how on earth that ball stayed out of that net, I will never know, John. It's just not meant to be. That, that's the way the game was intended to be, a draw. It's, uh, it's turned out two each. Ping pong, the ball stays out the net. Nothing we can do about that. We can't change it. There's no point talking about it. But I like you say, how on earth did it stay out of the net? But stay out of the net, it did. And uh, the keep the uh, sorry, the referee no letting Celtic take the corner. I thought that was quite poor, considering the amount of time wasting it was going on. And he refused to let Celtic take that corner, which could have ended up in the back of the net. We just don't know. It never happened, so we won't ever know. But aye, that was poor from the referee. I think. Yeah. Yeah, quite poor. Um, but anyway, John, as I said on the preview, a draw wouldn't be the end of the world. And let's get into um, what happened today. In fact, no, what, what I want to do is um, go into the individual scores first, John, because it's interesting because they played really well in the first half and not so well in the second half, although the last 15 minutes, as you say, we just pounded their goal, didn't we? But we threw away a two-goal lead here, John. Um, but outstanding in the first half as well. Was your individual one to ten player markings, John, for this one? I it's tough. Casper uh, Schmeichel six. Uh, Liam Scales. I'll give for his performance a seven for Big Liam. Um, he got outpaced for the goal, but it's not his fault. He's no blessed with pace. Uh, so seven for Big Liam. Trusty three, I thought he was terrible, Xander. I honestly thought he was terrible. Um, mm. Alistair Johnston, I'll give him a six and a half. Right, thought his corner the whole game. Really, I'll give him a seven, in fact, as well. Thought his corner the whole game, Alistair Johnston. Mm. Always sought for the battle. Other side, Alex Valley, six for Alex Valley. Kicked up and down the park the whole game. Carl McGregor, six. Hatati, six and a half. Arnie Engels, give him a five and a half. Up front, Dyson Maeda, three. Hopeless, absolutely hopeless. Done nothing. I mean, he done absolutely nothing. A three for him. Kyogo, Key Kyogo, a seven for his assist and his goal. And Nicholas Kuno on the other side. He was as bad as Maeda. Maybe not quite as bad, so I'll give him a four and a half. All right, all right, John. Fair, fair enough. Yeah, there was there was some players that didn't turn up, and that's you can't allow that when you're playing a team team at 
the top of the league, John, um, joint talk with Celtic. You've got to have every player firing. And uh, we did say that in the preview as well, that Maida has to be firing on all cylinders, running up and down that line. And to be fair to Dyson, he was, he was nowhere near it. So he's, he's allowed an, an off day, of course he is. Um, and I'll quickly run through my scores, John. Uh, Schmeichel, I'm giving a five. Didn't see Casper doing much in the game at all, John, to be honest with you. So a five for him. Um, Alistair, a seven. Trusty, a five. Scales, a seven. Um, Alex Valley, a six and a half. I think it was decent, but not great. Uh, Callum, seven. I think it's going to be close to seven all the way through here, John. Um, Arnie Engel, seven and a half. I think it was very good in the first half and just fell away in the second half. Um, but he played really well and he assisted for the first goal as well, didn't he? Uh, Rio Hattati, seven. Yeah, nice goal for Rio. Uh, he played okay through the game. Dyson Mida, I'm going to give him a three and a half. John, he was more or less non existent. Went to Kyogo, seven and a half for his goal and assist. And on the other side, Kuhn gets a five, John. So, yeah, it's up and down scores, isn't it? Uh, low, low to medium, I would say. Um, but that reflects on the performance, I suppose. I I kind of agree with Engels uh, playing well. I just think he done nothing really. I know he did have the shot off the bar and they had another shot. Uh, he, he wasn't, a, in my opinion, anyway. I mean, you might have seen more than what I did because sometimes I lose track of what players what when I'm watching a game. Uh, but for what I've seen, nah, the, the worst player on the park yesterday was Dyson my either. That says it all for me. Normally, a high scorer dies in, isn't he? Him and Nicholas Kuhn, two great wingers, both of them. Nah, I think Nicholas Kuhn edged it for me in that department with the wingers, but uh, Dyson was uh, terrible. He should have been took, took off after the half time whistle because they'd done nothing in the first half either. Well, was Dyson away playing for Japan because he looked quite leggy? He looked as though his legs were away, actually, John. So, um, I don't know if he played both games for Japan or not. I'm not sure. I didn't even look into it. But you know, if he was if he was tired and unfit or whatever, he should have been rested, John. You've got you've got a couple of wingers on the bench there, Forrest and Palmer. You know, there is options there. So um yeah, but he came off eventually, didn't he? So man in the match, John. <laughs> you know, um this is gonna be tough, isn't it? Um but there's only one or two standouts for Celtic went there. So who was your man in the match? Oh, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. I was thinking Kyogo for his goal and his assist. Andy got elbowed in the face with uh, Nielsen. I know we mentioned that earlier. Nielsen actually went over to make sure he was all right, to be fair to him, after Kyogo put it in the net. Um, so it's a, for me, it's a, it's a toss of the coin between Kyogo and Liam Scales. Because apart from getting out pace for the goal, like I said, it's no Liam's fault. He's no blessed with the best pace but he's a brilliant defender in Scotland I mean playing in the SPL he's that's he's really good probably one of the best defenders in the SPL but uh, I think I'm going to give it to Kyogo for his goal and his assist Sander mm, yeah yeah I'm the same John it's Kyogo for me uh, he ran and ran and ran and he got his rewards, didn't he? So it's Kyogo for me as well, John. So, okay, that's it. Um, 2 2 finishes a Desmond, 2 2. So, um, <laughs> it's, I, I could, I, uh, I predicted the correct score, but in the wrong game, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it, John. No, no, it's uh, nobody got the correct score, John. So, uh, that's that's the least of the worries, isn't it, John? We just don't want this, you know, dropping points, uh, struggling against Ross County and getting hammered in the Champions League. That's the, the team's got to start picking itself up now. Okay, we've, we've had our international break, we've had our wee scare with Aberdeen. Now it's time to start picking up the form again, John, because um, we don't want this going on any further or any longer, that's for sure. No, definitely not. And it uh, doesn't get any easier next week either. Motherwell away from home. Yeah, Motherwell, yeah, very tough. Although they did get gubbed, I think, yesterday, didn't they? 4-1 or something. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about the scorers, but I know they got beat. Uh, but we've got Atalanta before that as well, John. So, it's um, as you say, it doesn't get any easier, does it? So, we'll, we'll touch on that um, after we, we move on to what happened today, which made yesterday's result 
actually a decent result, John, because Rangers lost to Kamarnock the day, one nothing to Kamarnock, a late goal. Um, I can't remember who it was that scored. I was that excited. <laughs> so, um, but it's a late goal for Kamarnock anyway, John. Uh, and it was, it was a decent wee finish as well uh, from the boy. Um, kept his shot low by um, Butland and goals, John. So Rangers look very ordinary, John. I think uh, we need to start talking about you know, Aberdeen being our closest challengers now rather than Rangers as it stands anyway. Well, right now, for what I've seen uh, between Aberdeen and Rangers, I've watched every Aberdeen game this season. Uh, I've not watched that many Rangers games, a few European ones, a couple of European ones, whatever. Uh, Aberdeen definitely look a better team. And I've got Rangers up at Petaudry on the 30th, a Wednesday night. So, uh, But there's a lot of football to, to be played between now and then. But I, Rangers look very, very ordinary. Um, I didn't see the game today. You were the bearer of good news when you sent me the text. I switched it on to see the in time for the celebrations and the highlights. I seen that. So I what a win for Kamarnock. By the way, before I go on about the, the Rangers game, just yes, yesterday's results. St Johnston three, Ross County nil. Dundee United three, Hibernian two. Hearts four, St Mirren nil. Celtic yeah. 2, Aberdeen 2, of course, and Motherwell 0, Dundee 1, followed by the day, Kamarnock 1, Rangers 0. Let's talk about Rangers. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, I mean, let, let's talk about Rangers. But before we talk about Rangers, John, I want to talk about what happened last night in the east end of Glasgow from 6 o'clock to about half past 10 last night. Fireworks, rockets gone off the whole night. I don't know if there was something else going on. Nothing that I've heard of anyway. It's as soon as the, the result came through from Celtic Park, more or less, the fireworks were going off all night, John. So if anybody knows what that was all about, let me know. But I think it was all to do with the football, John. Celtic drawn against Aberdeen. You know, if that's the case, you know, it's, it's total stupidity because surely you've got to wait till you play your game before you start celebrating, John. Because Rangers are now further behind both Celtic and Aberdeen, for that matter, John. Um, to me, it's just total stupidity. Aye, like we says before, rockets for rockets, bangers for bangers. It's they're just a disgrace, actually. You know, every time Celtic drop a point the route, and it's the fifth of November. Every time Celtic drop a point, I, I don't know what's going through their minds if they're celebrating stuff like that. Obviously, Celtic dropping a point or two points, whatever, is more important to them than their own team winning a game. Like he says, they haven't even had their own team play yet. They haven't played yet to the next day, and they're out celebrating. But let the fireworks off. If Celtic have dropped points and Rangers have won, you could get something to celebrate. You've gained something, but they've actually lost something, and they're celebrating it. I just don't get it. I don't get the mentality. Um... Me personally, I think fireworks should be banned altogether anyway. I think they should be outlawed, fireworks. I don't see the the point in them. All it does is annoy people's pets. It terrifies them. So I've never seen the point in fireworks. Never, ever seen the point in them, Sander. I, just, I don't get Rangers fans every time Celtic drop points, they're out with fireworks. Yeah, it doesn't, uh, make, it doesn't make sense to me. No, no, it doesn't, John. And, and it's a good point you brought up because there's a wee woman walking by my window um, with her dog. I know we're going off the track here, but um, she was really concerned about her pet, John, because of the, the noise and that. So it does it does a noise that the cats and the dogs, etc. Um, but, John, they're setting off fireworks on Saturday night, even though Celtic went further ahead. Because last night Celtic went six points ahead of Rangers with the point. You know, to, I mean, it's just total mind-numbing stupidity, as far as I'm concerned, to be honest with you, John. And then they go and they get beat the day. Let's touch on that, John. They get beat the day, right? So I did watch the game. You didn't You didn't watch the game, John. The referee added on six minutes of injury time, John, at the end. Six minutes. There was no VAR. There was no injuries. There was no time wasting. There was nothing. But he still found it in his wisdom to add on an extra six 
minutes of injury time, John, to try and get Rangers that equaliser. Well, did them any good though, did it? So it doesn't matter. But I they'll, they'll try everything. They'll try everything to get try and get Rangers back into a game. These referees. That's just the paranoia. That's just fact. I've not seen the game, so I can't comment on the day's game. But I have seen similar things happening with injury time when it comes to Rangers. Uh, if they're winning, they'll end the game quick. If they're losing, they'll add an extra five minutes injury time for them to try and get back into the game. This has been going on for a long time. And it's no paranoia. We see it with our own eyes. Yesterday, Celtic Park, there was 10 minutes injury time added on when I think there should have been more. With the time wasting, the injuries, uh, the subs, all that stuff, the, the VAR bar. checks. Yep. Um, I think there should be more than 10 minutes added at the Celtic game. But that referee just would not let Celtic take that corner kick. If that was Rangers, I'd trust me, Xander, they were taking that corner kick. Yeah, yeah, exactly, John. And there was time wasting in the injury time, if you've got to remember, in the Celtic game. There was time wasting in those 10 minutes. So that wasn't added on. So anyway, John, um, maybe I'm splitting hairs a wee bit with that. No, no, you're not. You're not that, that's when the most... Injury time, it was you. All that injury time was used up with Aberdeen players play acting with cramp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but as you say, John, it didn't do them any good, John, because Celtic still got the point that puts them six points ahead of Rangers. Okay, Aberdeen, John, they're still breathing down our necks, and they let's have a wee look at next week's league fixtures, John. We've got Aberdeen against Dungeon United on the Saturday, excuse me, the Saturday. That's a three o'clock kickoff next Saturday. That's a tough one for Aberdeen with Dungeon United winning yesterday. It's always a tough game anyway between Aberdeen and Dungeon United. So they play first on the Saturday. We play on the Sunday against Motherwell at three o'clock and Rangers are at home to St Mirren at the same time, three o'clock. So that's your fixtures for next weekend. John, what are you thinking? Uh, it is a tough game for Aberdeen, but uh, Dundee United yesterday... Uh, what was the score with Dundee United? I just read it a minute ago. I can't remember now. Yeah, they won it anyway, didn't they? 3-1, was it? 3 Something like that. I can't remember. But uh, no, they were playing Hibs. I think they won 2-1. I just read it a minute ago. <laughs> I know. Um, no, but they won it anyway, John. So that isn't going to be easy for Aberdeen. That's that's a tough one. They have to uh, play Dungeon. It's at Pataudry, mind you, John. It is at Pataudry. So, um, but it's still tough. It's still uh, tough for them. Uh, it was 3-2, Dundee United won Xander. Yeah, 3-2 um, United. 3-2. Yeah. Uh, Dundee United, I like Dundee United, but we all that went on yesterday, I totally forgot even about the games yesterday. I never even looked it up to earlier. But, aye, Dundee United at Pataudry. Can I see anything other than an Aberdeen won Xander? Mm. Even though that's a kind of derby game, but I can't see Aberdeen... Losing to Dundee United. Good, good win for Dundee United yesterday. Hibs down to 10 men, of course. Uh, Dundee United winning that one 3 uh, 2, Xander. Yeah. Yeah. And Motherwell, John, getting beat against Dundee at home. You know, the back to back home games for Motherwell. Obviously, they play us next week at Fur Park. So, uh, Motherwell, John, I don't know. I don't know what's happened there. Uh, lost to Dundee. Don't know if there's any red cards or anything. I don't think there was. But uh, it's not a great result for them, so you know it's always a different team that turns up against Celtic, though, isn't it? No, there was no red cards, and I it's always a different team that turns up against Celtic. So Motherwell lose one 0 yesterday. I predicted them to win three 0 against Dundee. Well done, uh, Dundee. But I just look Motherwell two home games in a row, one against Dundee, then one against Celtic. When is Celtic going to get two home games in a row? Yeah, so it's just not going to happen. It's no, no, you're not going to get two league games in a row for some reason. I don't know what that's all about. Uh, but every other team seems to get it. But, you know, John, it, it doesn't matter. As long as we, we put this wee bit of bad form behind us, that's the most important thing, isn't it? We can't go on um, you know, struggling against Ross County, drawing against Aberdeen and struggling in Europe, John. It's, uh, I know the next one's very, very tough away to Atalanta. Um, I know that's very tough. Um, that goes without saying. But, in the league especially, John, we kind of go, um, we need to pick up the form, let's put it that way. I would definitely need to pick the form up. Uh, I thought, like, I'm, I'm like you, I thought we played okay in the first half yesterday and then probably the last 
20 minutes. That's including the, the stoppage time of 10 minutes. So from the 80th minute forward, I thought Celtic absolutely pounded Aberdeen's goal. They didn't know how to deal with it. That's the way that whole game should have been. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's easier said than done. Aberdeen went there for a battle, and that's what they've done. Oh, by the way, let's, while we were talking about Rangers there, Chris Boyd today, raging with Rangers getting beat on Sky. And I watched, when you told me about the result, I switched it on to watch the aftermath, because mm -hmm. uh, you texted me after it finished. But, and I was, what, I'm listening to Chris Boyd. I thought, he's raging with Rangers getting beat. But didn't they congratulate his old team? Come on, why is there no region we come on when they get beat? Yeah, you know, it's all about Rangers with him. He's an ex come on player. Why no show a bit of happiness for them winning? Yeah, yeah, it's, I, I think even Big Chris Sutton actually brought that up, John. The, the, bit, the wee bit that I saw, he says, uh, I'm sure, sure, sure you're happy for come on and, and I, I didn't even want to listen to what boys got to say, to be honest with you, but um. Yeah, John, it's quite pathetic, isn't it? You know, <laughs> just watching him and listening to him, it just, you know, it just annoys you, doesn't it? So, yeah, John, he's he's there for one club and one club only, and that's for Rangers. So, it's more or less watching Rangers TV again, isn't it? Basically, I uh, you had uh, the other pundit on Sky, we Stephen Davis that used to play from. He's quite a quiet wee guy, isn't he? Really, doesn't he really? Do it to annoy me, Stephen Davis, just a quiet no. wee guy, gives an honest opinion and takes his paycheck and goes away, <laughs> basically. But on uh, Aberdeen TV yesterday with Rob McLean and Billy Dodds, what's, what's he got to do with Aberdeen? <laughs> well, I think Dodds played for them at one point, didn't he? But <laughs> I, was, I was listening to that, John, you're right, actually, I'm glad you brought that up, because the first 10 minutes, they were loving how aggressive Aberdeen were. This is brilliant. They were saying, this is a, the aggression, brilliant, keep it up, lads. And then Celtic put in a couple of tackles. That's disgraceful. <laughs> I, I, uh, Billy Dodds, just a, what a joke he is. I, I, used, yeah. I used to, I didn't mind Billy Dodds normally. You, you, we know he's a Rangers fan, that's fair enough. We don't hate him because he's a Rangers fan. Don't hate him at all. But yesterday uh, on Red TV, uh, <laughs> it's just, it just, it just, it was all wrong. Timmy's under heaven hand there with Rob McLean, who's probably a blue nose as well. I don't want to say that, it might not be, but I always thought he was. Yeah. So you've got these two probably blue noses watching Celtic at Celtic Park playing against their apparent team, Aberdeen Red TV. Why don't they have Aberdeen pundits on it? You know? Yeah. Yeah. But actual Aberdeen fans. Well, like big Wally yeah. Miller, I know he was an Aberdeen legend. I think he was from Brighton in Glasgow, but he's an Aberdeen legend and he absolutely loves Aberdeen. So why not have somebody like him on it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, ex-Aberdeen players, whatever, John. Yeah, you're right. Uh, but I thought that was quite funny. It was quite funny listening to it, to be honest with you. Um, Atalanta are beating Venez Venezia 2 nothing just now, John. In fact, there's a full-time whistle. Full-time whistle is just blowing... Venezia now Atalanta too, so a good result for Atalanta. They keep the the ball rolling there, so that was a um, that's what we're up against, John. Obviously, uh, they're firing. We, we know that they're firing. Celtic ladies um, against Spartans, John. The ladies are struggling, aren't they? But they are ahead, John, with five minutes to go. It's Celtic ladies one, Spartans now as it stands with five minutes to go. What's your thoughts, Sergio? Uh, I, I forgot that was on actually, but. There you go. I'm sure they'll hold out on that one. Uh, Spartans. Know nothing about them. Never heard of them. But uh, I've heard of them in the women's league. I don't know if they've got, they must have a men's team as well. But there you go. Aye, well done, yeah. the Celtic ladies. Hope, just hope they can uh, hold on. But right now, I'm just rejoicing in that beautiful result today at Rugby Park Zander. Um, Watching the Rangers fans when I switched switched it over, they're all raging, of course, spitting venom at the players, spitting venom at the manager. They're raging, they're in turmoil. They were out last night with their bangers, letting them off. Oh, we're all happy. Celtic have the rope points. Oh, let's celebrate for five hours. And then the day comes, and now they look like total idiots. What a day. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's good, John. Uh, yeah, John, it's uh, it's beyond laughable, John. It's beyond it, unless something, some sort of big party was happening in Glasgow yesterday that I don't know of and nobody else knows of. Um, it was Rangers supporters setting off fireworks to wind up Celtic supporters coming home from the game. So, uh, yeah, you wind all you did was make yourself look really foolish, Rangers fans. You really need to pack it in. You really do, John. Bruni watch before we go any further. Bruni watch another bad result for Scott Brown. I'm afraid. Air United one, Livingston two. Yesterday, so Air <laughs> United are now four points behind Falkirk, John. Uh, all of us, this is all just turned around quickly, isn't it? Uh, with Falkirk with a game or two in hand as well. So, uh, it's uh, things are beginning to slip a wee bit for Scott Brown. St. Johnson still on the phone for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, John, uh, you know, that's a bad one. I think getting beat 2 1 at home to, to Livingston, obviously, Livingston, an ex Premier League team, but you know, team on form, a team on form like Air United, Scott Brown in charge, should be doing a wee bit better there, I think. Ah, well, it is what it is. I did say at the start of the season, I don't think they'll win the league. I think they might be uh, in the playoffs. They might be challenging for a playoff position. Um, and I still stick to that. I think they'll... Uh, Bruno will pick it up. And I think they, they will challenge for a playoff position. I'm quite sure of that. Um, but you know what? Like some, some fireworks after yourself with this under no? Celebrating? No? no, it's funny. <laughs> it's funny you say that again, John, because... After the party last night that lasted five and a half hours, there's been not one firework being set off in the east end of Glasgow that I've heard anyway, John. Not one single firework. You know, there's a there's a difference between the Celtic supporters and the Rangers supporters, John. You know, we've got a bit of class about us. You know, they celebrate when Celtic go further ahead in the league. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> it's quite funny, John. It really is. Uh, a wee touch, a wee word, sorry, John, on... Derek McInnes, before we go, um, we spoke about Derek McInnes um, a few weeks ago, talking about his integrity next to Naismith, didn't we? Um, and look at what he done today, John. Turned it over his ex-heroes, his ex-club, turned them over, John, again, not for the first time. Um, so kudos to Derek McInnes, John. This guy's doing really well. Aye, aye. Look, that's a great result for Kamarnock like today. It is. And Derek McInnes, like he says, we spoke about that before. We used to compare him to Stephen Naismith, who I won't get into Stephen Naismith. He's away now, but we know what he was all about. Uh, Derek McInnes, a man of integrity. We might know, but no, we. A lot of Celtic fans don't like Derek, Derek McInnes because he's an ex-Rangers player and he's a wee bit of a sore loser when he does lose against, no, just Celtic, any team. But he's a man of integrity. He's not going to send his team out to lie down. He, he's a professional manager and he wants the best for his team, the best for his fans. And he got that today. His fans are away home happy the night. The Commander fans were absolutely loving it. Um, so I look, thank you, Derek McInnes. Thank you, Commander. You've made all the Celtic fans very happy today. Me and Xander included. We're over the moon. Uh, if I had a packet of rockets, I'd probably wouldn't set them off myself, Xander. But uh, there you go. I don't <laughs> indulge. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You keep your money in your pocket. You're right, John. Uh, just one more wee thing before we go. One very, very last wee thing. Colombo, one more thing. Uh, Braves, five. Celtic, B, one, John. So we'd never heard of Braves. Still never heard of them. But they turned the Celtic, B, over, five, one. So uh, the B team no doing too well. So anyway... By the way, see, the Hearts B team got beat 4-1 as well. So, this uh, Lowland League must be quite a tough league, John. I feel like uh, Warriors that, isn't it? The Braves. Very, very Braves. brave turning the Celtic over 5-1. Yeah, yeah, big result. Massive. Um, all right, John. That's it. That does it for the day. That's us at 50 minutes. Um, well done to Kamarnock, you know, for you know, bringing the Rangers supporters back down to earth. Um, and well done to Aberdeen for getting a point, by the way. They did well. They, they did really well. But it wasn't what we were looking for. We wanted the one. We wanted the three points. We didn't get the three points. But at the end of the day, John, it's a point against our closest challengers. Um, 
you know, Aberdeen are still to play Rangers four times, remember? So, um, you know, Aberdeen are playing really well. So the way I look at it just now, you know, six points clear of Rangers, um, that was a decent point. Aye, that's a decent point. I'll take it all day. It's, it's a point that I welcome, especially the day. That point seems huge. We've widened the gap between us and Rangers. But obviously, we still haven't shifted Aberdeen off our tails. But uh, aye, look, the point's welcomed. Uh, the command at one is welcomed. I uh, can only say thank you again and again to Derek McInnes and Kamarnock. Um, it's made us all very happy. I'm over the moon. It could have been eight points clear at the end of the day, but I'll take six. Yeah, that's it, John. We'll take six. Um, um, and I think I think we sort of blew it yesterday, if I'm going to be honest. You know, two nothing up um, to come out, out of there with just a point. So we, we've only got ourselves to blame. So we, we put it behind us, John. It's gone. It's away. We look at Motherwell on Sunday. That's up next. And we're looking for the full three points there. But before that, we've got Atalanta on Wednesday night. We'll do a preview for that on Tuesday night, folks. Um, thanks for joining us, everybody. Thank you, John, for coming on on a Sunday at short notice like that. Appreciate that. Um, hail, hail for now, everybody. We'll catch you all in midweek. Hail, hail. Hail, hail, Xander. See you later, mate.